Okay, good morning. We're really excited to share uh, what we're trying to do with the music industry, and we have some great examples of what we're trying to do. I want to thank Council President Sarah Nelson for joining us, and you're going to hear from uh, others. Um, Greg Spots, thank you, and Mark McIntyre, thank you for being here, parts of my administration. Uh, this was a team effort on, on the legislation that we're very proud of. I want to start with a quote to sort of put us in the right mood. Music is one of the most powerful things in this world that this world has to offer. No matter what race or religion or nationality or sexual orientation or gender that you are, it has the power to unite us all. And that came from the symbol of wisdom in our country, Lady Gaga. <laughs> so tonight, today we're celebrating another effort for us to help uh, foster a thriving music industry right here in Seattle. We all know those that live and work and play here in Seattle, there is very indeed something special about it. And we cannot take for granted at all small businesses, restaurateurs, music venues, our artists. In fact, not only should we not take them from granted, we need to invest and think about policies such that they can thrive because we have a very unique music scene here. Uh, music venues were some of the first to close during the <coughs> first congregate spaces to close during the pandemic and the last to reopen. And so live music venues and their musicians and both local and around the world have been instrumental in our efforts to revitalize and bring joy to our communities, to bring hope. Um, I, don't, I can't speak for everyone, but I will tell you that every morning I wake up to some form of music to inspire me. And I often ask crowds or human beings, what inspires you? What what gets you sort of in that vibe to get through a day. Some days are tougher than others. So Seattle venues are putting on nearly 7,000 shows per year here. So we looked at this as a city and we uh, developed music venue zone permits. And this is an example of a common sense solution working with our people in the industry to make our local music venues and our musicians and our cr crews, working with them to create the world-class music experience that we indeed cherish in Seattle and we want to invest in. These permits, these new music venue zone permits will provide reliable parking and loading space for touring musicians and the crews at live venues. This legislation authorizes the Seattle Department of Transportation, SDOT, to administer a music venue zone program and establish music venue zones at qualifying music venues. And this will allow, again, parking and, and a, a, per, a valid permit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, this is, eliminates the need for venues to create individual ways to block off curb space, um, create sort of sometimes what could be hazardous conditions, you know, putting cones down, putting cones here. Uh, it permits uh, daily, or rather daily system, if you will, design and intended for construction contractors, trying to make their jobs easier and safer for everyone. This legislation will benefit all neighborhoods that are here to, uh, you know, that honor and are home to live music. And examples will be right here, uh, the, the Crocodile in Belltown, the Royal Room in Columbia City, Numos in Capitol Hill, the Neptune in the U District. I'm proud to say that I, I think I visited all those venues and we won't talk about uh, that side of me that goes to these venues, but uh, <laughs> just mayor, just making sure everyone's happy in these venues. That's my, that's my job, that's my line, I'm gonna stick to it. We estimate about 33 venues are eligible to apply for permits once application becomes available in 2025. So again, more than 300 venue operators and artists respond to a survey conducted by SDOT and OED, thus the directors of those great departments being here, the Seattle Music Commission, communicating the need for these types of permits. And I wanna thank Virginia, again, OED, and the Music Commission for engaging with the industry and creating policy solutions to support this industry. So next you're gonna hear from Council President Sarah Nelson who was very instrumental and, and a partner in this work and we all know that she and her team are deliberating during the budget. This is really, really tough work and they are doing it very thoughtfully. I know Council Member Tanya Wu is here as well. Oh, Bob, you snuck up on me here. So <laughs> Council Member Bob Kettler are here as well and we wanna really uh, thank them for the work that they're doing. I, I, we watch it from the TV and they are doing it in a very thoughtful way, listening to communities, and I'm very proud of the work they're doing together as a city council. So next you hear from City Council President Sarah Nelson. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Harrell. So um, we are making history today. I want you to look all around 
This is history in the making because you've got, let's see, four electeds here and a bunch of staff all together celebrating parking. <laughs> I think that's really funny, you know. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you saw that happen? Anyway, um, well, it's, it's, it's parking for musicians and it's parking that will benefit the music venues. And in Seattle, we like to talk about loving the creative economy and growing the creative economy and how important the creative economy is to our overall economy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what does that really mean? You know, it's easier said than done. And when you get right down to it, because of our constitutional limitations, we can't just write checks to venues that have been struggling through the pandemic. It's really difficult to actually pin down what helping the creative economy grow and thrive really means. Well, to me, it means listening to the people that are in the economy, that are the um, that live the uh, the you know the daily life of um, keeping our city vibrant through music. Just listen to them and give them what they want if it's possible. To me, my kind of my brand, I guess, is remove barriers, and so that is what this has done. We have simply listened to the music commission. I want to thank Scott here for um, convening music commission events because I believe I heard about this on one of the first events that I went to in 2002, 22. Anyway, you've known for a long time that this was a priority. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time in coming. 2010, I think, was the pilot project, but it really was a sustained effort on your part. We listened and we delivered. And, um, you know, you got through the pandemic. Think about it. You got through the pandemic. You were shut down. What does a music venue do? What do nightlife places do? What do musicians do when you can't, um, you can't work your craft? Well, uh, so if you got through those hard times, the least we could do is make it a little bit easier to attract musicians who are on tour and, and not miss out on, um, on that revenue and on those opportunities. And so that is sort of what motivated me is to figure out um, what could help. You told me I'm into low-hanging fruit and here we are. And I w really want to say that I recognize full well that this was a long time coming. And so thank you so much for your advocacy and just breaking it down for me what you really wanted to, um, to uh, see this actually happen. And I also want to thank the, uh, the curbside management team at SDOT. It was um, your sustained work as well. I feel, and, and going forward, this legislation does have a section that does say that there will be um, an effort to work with other businesses on the block, on adjacent blocks, to make sure that these spaces contribute to and do not take away from the economy of, um, of uh, the, the districts where these music venues are ultimately permitted. So I just wanted to say that um, this is a win for everybody. Yes, parking can be a win, and thank you very much for gathering today, and thank you, Mayor Hill. Thank you, Councilor President. I figure the word revenues would come up at least once in her remarks. Thank you uh, with what they're dealing with. And again, as uh, the chair of the Public Safety Committee, Bob Kettle, thank you for being here. And again, uh, Councilor Member Tanya Wu, as an at-large member, realizing what we're trying to do uh, throughout the city to make it more vibrant and more active for our music venues. Uh, next, you're going to hear from Shana Foley. Uh, she's sort of relatively new on the music scene. She's a new commissioner on our Seattle uh, uh, Music uh, Commission. I uh, did a little snooping around, trying to figure out who, who this is what they say about you. <laughs> she's a can-do, positive attitude person that walks in the room and they lights up the room when she works here. And, the crocodile ven venues, we all know how the, the vibe in these places. So you are a welcome, uh, you are a welcome partner in, this, uh, in the Northwest area. And thank you for immediately volunteering for what you're doing to help not just your establishments, but all of the establishments like you. That is really public service. Shana, please sh share a few words with us. Hello, everybody. Welcome this morning. Um, we're honored to welcome Mayor Harold, Council Member Nelson, and Kettle, and, and Chang Wu, uh, also um, our music commission, and one of our favorite bands, La Fonda, this morning, <laughs> and all of the other supporters uh, to live music 
to the crocodile today as we celebrate this significant milestone. Uh, this occasion for us is a great reminder to artists and venues like us that our community is committed to nurturing creativity. Uh, and it's wonderful to see the deep well of support in the, for the live commu community in Seattle and with the council and everyone else who supported us through this. So uh, since 91, Crocodile has been in Belltown. I think we all know this. We've been through a lot of parking struggles <laughs> in that time. Um, we host over 850 live arts, comedy, music events per year, bringing um, 270,000 or more people into our Belltown neighborhood. Uh, so in those shows, um, we are one of the many incredible live music venues in this city, and we all face one major significant obstacle together, which is reliable and secure parking for our artists and our staff and our technical people that are coming in to do work. Um, it is one of the most significant challenges we face daily. I wish I had one dollar for every time I've talked to somebody about parking outside of the venue. Um, until now, the permitting process to reserve parking has been tedious and expensive and required extended lead time that isn't conducive to our industry as we're advancing shows. The introduction of this music venue load zone marks a significant improvement in the permitting process. It's very difficult for us to overstate the positive impact that this is going to have on every venue and every operator in the city of Seattle. It will ensure stress-free and safe load-in experiences for our artists and crews while also minimizing disruptions to our neighborhoods and to pedestrians by protecting them from large uh, technical equipment or, or um, traffic that's happening on the sidewalk. Uh, we will now be able to provide parking for free to artists and their crews, uh, which has been a financial burden, frankly, to artists and to venues for some times, uh, often in the hundreds of dollars per show, and that adds up over $850 per year, or 850 shows per year, as you can imagine. So those dollars will stay in artists' pockets and they will stay in venues' pockets, and we're very grateful for that. Parking closer to the venue will keep artists' items safer and cut down on potential devastating car prowling or theft for these artists. And um, for us, it eliminates hours and hours of administrative time, letting us focus that hospitality and time on our bands and our staff. Um, having designated spaces will allow us to also invest in long-term solutions to help the climate and to help our neighbors' ears, like shore power, which will allow us to cut off generators running and creating pollution in our uh, part of the city. So we're grateful for that as well. Music venue parking zones will enhance the experience for artists from top to bottom and help keep Seattle on the list as a must-play city where live music continues to inspire us, invigorate our community, draw people to our neighborhoods, and uh, attract visitors. We would like to thank very much the Department of Transportation, Office of Economic Development, the Music Commission, um, and all of our representatives, the mayor and the, the council, for uh, working on this legislation and their continued support of live music venues in, uh, and of Seattle music fans as well. We're looking forward to a bright future for music venues in Seattle. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Shana. Next, we're going to hear from Jason Clackley, who is the artistic director for the Vera Project and uh, chair of our Seattle Music Commission. And in the Vera Project that's located at Seattle Center's campus, I think many of you know the work that he does is so important. Nurturing and creating and finding ways to find that next level of talent here in Seattle. And you know, often just probably being a psychologist half the time as well, an inspirer. Uh, for particularly underrepresented communities, artistics, artists that are trying to find their voice, and again, as a volunteer, chair of our Seattle uh, Music Commission. So thank you. Jason, please share a few words with us. Thanks so much. Um, I am the chair of the Seattle Music Commission and uh, have been since um, uh, July, I believe, uh, but I was the vice chair for quite some time. Um, 
just to echo what everybody already said, thank you to Scott and Virginia, boots on the ground for the work that you've done, economic development and curbside uh, for all the work. Um, and uh, council member Nelson for being our champion on this. And um, thank you everybody else for voting for it. That's pretty cool too. Um, <laughs> but um, I play a dual role. so. Not only it, am I the artistic director of the Vera Project, I book shows, I um, advocate for the music industry. I'm also a musician for the last 25 years. So part of the work is informed by the fact that I've had no parking and I've had, uh, <laughs> so there's that. Um, and also uh, I've had my van stolen. In, in cities where I'm like, okay, cool. Well, this is a good start to the trip. Uh, and, uh, you know, the big thing about access and safety for the vans is, is so huge because honestly, when you're out of, state, out of state plates, you got a bunch of stuff in your van, you're just a target. So having this parking right in front of the venues is just gonna really change that. So I wanna emphasize that. A lot of other th great things have been emphasized today, but I just wanna emphasize that what we're doing today is really one of the first cities in the nation to do something like this, to prioritize its venues, especially its independent venues, its musicians that are national, international, local, and making sure that folks have the equitable access to the space. So, um, as the Seattle Music Commission, we're gonna to continue to prioritize these things. And yes, uh, you you stole my joke already uh, about the boring uh, aspect of parking, but it's awesome. It's so important. I mean, you know, the minutiae or whatever, if people feel like, well, what, what about this? No, parking is really important. We have to get people here and we have to get them to stay here and to enjoy their time, especially the ones that are coming out from, uh, you know, uh, out of town. We want this to be what I like to call an A minus market right now. We gotta be an A plus market. We gotta be up there with LA, we gotta be up there with New York, and we need to make sure that people know that we mean business here. Um, we'll continue to push legislation that supports uh, its people and it supports the, um, the bottom line for, for its people and how, who we serve. But not to mention, just as a shout out too, these venues, all of us, all of our venues are either teaching or employing uh, folks in and around the city that need jobs, need good paying jobs. And so this allows us to free up that and to be able to do what we need to do is to make sure that our production world is taken care of as well. Um, again, it's a wonderful step forward. I really appreciate the work that everybody's done and it's been hard work that we've had to uh, put in it over since 2010. So uh, I really wanna thank everybody uh, again uh, for the work and thank you Mayor Hill for signing this thing and making sure that we have uh, room to grow our industry and continue to grow our industry again uh, post COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. You know, as uh, contrary to what most of you think, I'm actually not the, the coolest person up here. Um, the next two speakers are the coolest people up here, and I'll share a little bit about them in a minute. I did want to say that, the, the, for, you know, we always ask ourselves, you know, why are we doing something? Yes, we want to support our artists and our venues. We want to make Seattle vibrant, uh, vibrant again. When these concepts that first sort of developed through discussions, if you go to uh, the Safeway on 23rd in Madison, you'll actually see a picture of my father in a band with Quincy Jones. He was a trumpet player. And my dad, I was a trumpet player, Jason. I, I wasn't a good one, but I played the trumpet because <laughs> my father always wanted me like Quincy. And the music scene here is indeed strong. And again, once again, as I said in my earlier remarks, we're just trying to get started on really trying to bring recognition to, you know, they think of Seattle, they think about some of these great employers in the industry and the port and maritime industry, but our music scene is, is on fire. And we, not literally, by the way, just uh, it's an expression the kids say, uh, but we want to make sure that we are the strongest partners. And having said that, the next two speakers are just someone we're so proud of. Valerie and v Veronica Tapasio, uh, better known as La Fonda, is a popular indie rock band right here in Seattle, and in 2023, their sophomore album, We Are Infinite, 
was named one of the top 10 albums of the year by the Seattle Times, landed on uh, KEXP's top 90.3 albums of 2023, and was recognized by NPR as one of the top shelf performances in the Tiny Desk Contest. We're really honored for you to uh, be here, and please share a few words, Valerie and Veronica. Hi, thank you so much for having us. We can't tell you how excited we are to know that parking is gonna be a lot easier. Um, the, the stress levels are, have been very high the last 10 years that we've been actively playing in Seattle. We've played so many different venues here, so this is definitely an exciting day. And it's really such an honor to be advocated for. Thank you. You know, it's um, going to be really exciting to see the ease and the of being able to just roll up to a venue after sitting in traffic and rushing to a sound check at 5 p.m. on a Friday, just having crossed 520, and you're just been going down Denny, struggling like the whole time. And it's just it feels really exciting to to be part of this, so thank you for advocating for us. And also, it's exciting to know that these venues, not only is Seattle just a legendary, vibrant city hub for arts, music, and culture, but these venues in itself, like we are standing in a legendary space. These venues carry so much tradition and memories, and it really carries the future of us being able to look back and um, celebrate what we've been a part of, which is music and shows and community and family. And the fact that the city has, is advocating for that and making it easier for musicians and the people that are contributing artistically to, to have ease with that is really wonderful. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before we close and uh, actually sign the legislation, um, we decided that we were going to end with a song that we've all prepared together, working with Valerie and Veronica and the city council members. <laughs> it's a Billie Eilish. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna sign. Thank you very much. We're going to sign some legislation. <laughs>